か Previously on Pioneer One. A piece of a plane's fuselage, maybe, crashed like in Canada. A dirty bomb? We haven't confirmed that yet. But that's what it looks like? Oh, nobody really knows what that looks like. That's no airliner. He was wearing this when we found him. Does that kid look like he was even born when there was a Soviet Union? He has cancer. Say that again? We need an expert in here, someone who knows what they're talking about. This is your Martian Pioneer. This man has been to Mars. He was born there. Can you help us out, Doctor? Absolutely. To abandon our efforts now is simply a failure of imagination of the worst kind. It's more than that. It's near criminal in the opinion of this humble scientist. We speak of a responsibility to the future, to our children's future, yet we refuse to take the next step as a civilization, as a species, to ensure that future. Mars is the next step. Mars is the future. Dr. Walzer, I'm sure I speak for all of us when I say that we appreciate your enthusiasm and your passion, but all the proposals I see here are simply too expensive to be taken seriously at this time. They say nothing of the danger involved. Perhaps With sometime all due respect, Mr. Chairman, what we are talking about here is akin to Columbus upon discovering the new world, deciding to turn his ships around and never looking back. Surely his contemporaries also thought his voyage was too expensive and too dangerous. Some might even have called it foolish, but that journey is what led us to where we are today. Not returning to the Americas after that first journey is unimaginable to us now. I sit here before you and say we are making that very mistake. I think Christopher Columbus is just a little outside the purview of this committee, Doctor. <laughs> May I continue? By all means. Thank you. If we go to Mars, we should go there to stay. By taking a long-term view and prioritizing sustainability, my proposal for a manned Mars mission is a third the cost of NASA's July 1997 proposal. The first... Yes, one second. Best Dr. Walzer to brief us on some of the unknowables we're dealing with here. Doctor? Dr. Walzer. Hmm? Yes, sorry. Are you ready to begin? Begin. Uh, yes, uh, please. So, since uh, we don't know the details of the mission architecture, I can only surmise based on what I believe to be the most sensible way to send people to Mars and survive on the surface. As soon as we get in contact with the Russian authorities, I'm sure they'll be able to confirm or correct some of the assumptions I've made here. Okay, given the cost prohibitive nature of most Mars mission proposals. I'd say this mission was probably some variation of my living off the land approach, for which I've advocated strongly for years. What distinguishes my approach from traditional approaches is in situ resource utilization, on which I'll get into more detail a little bit later. But this allows for immense savings in initial launch weight. Counterintuitively, 
a mission of this type would be yeah. launched during Martian conjunction, yeah, when Mars and the Earth an are the ago. greatest distance apart. By doing this, we're able to take advantage of the Earth's inertia and substantially reduce fuel cost on our trans-Mars injection maneuver, saving, as I said, an immense amount of weight. It's more than a fair trade-off, and I would argue it's no more of a risk than a launch during Martian opposition, when the Earth and Mars are closest together. Conventional thinking has it that this is the best time for a launch to Mars, because the thrust required... I'm going to stop you right there, Doctor. What is this? What's what? I asked you for a briefing. This sounds more like a sales pitch for your book. Well, in order to brief you, I have to... All establish. I need to know is if this Mars story is credible or not. I would say that it is. I told you that yesterday. I need evidence, proof, not a science lesson. Well, I'm working on that. Good. Let me know when you have something. dying. Cancer? Cancer is the least of his problems. He's having a reaction to something, and I can't for the life of me figure out what it is. Everything I try seems to make things worse. I thought it was an immunodeficiency disease, but all the tests are coming up negative. What are your theories? This isn't house, Mr. Taylor. I have some things I'm going to try. But I'm not optimistic. This kid just isn't possible. Where did you say he's from? I didn't. Just keep at it. I guess if he dies, this was all for nothing. If it means anything, I think you did the right thing. Yeah. Well, I hope the review board sees it that way, too. It doesn't matter who he is or where he's from. This is a person's life we're talking about. So just take care of that kid, doctor. I I'm doing my best, but no promises. Yeah. Let me know if anything changes. I hate when people say that to me. Do you think I'm going to keep it to myself? You'd be surprised. Yes. Okay. McClellan's office wants an ETA on the suspect. Tell them to call back. I think they meant they wanted it now. Yeah, and I wanted cheeseburgers. We have to give them something. It's the Deputy Secretary of Homeland. I'm aware of who it is on the other end of the goddamn phone, Agent Marson. I don't have anything new to tell them right now. All due respect, you can't dodge calls from the deputy secretary like it's a woman you're standing up on a date. Thanks for making that distinction. Is there anything else? Why are you doing what you're doing? Because we're not going to find out what's really going on here if we send him back as a terrorist. And how can you make that call? Because I'm the one making it. Are you here or aren't you? I'm here. Good. Was there anything else? No, sir. Thank you, Sophie. I think Dr. Walls would like to... Yeah. Do you want me to? Please. I didn't come here to be pushed around by you people. I'm sorry to think maybe it was a mistake bringing you in here. Well, I'm sorry to hear you feel that way, but I'm here and I'm not leaving. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way because it's not up to you. You know, I don't even understand why you brought me here in the first place. I know you're not the brightest bunch, but NASA still works for you, don't they? Dr. Walter, believe me when I say I don't have time to assuage your ego right now. People I work for are more interested in showing that they're tough on terror than bringing in anyone from NASA. It may come as a surprise to you, but they don't believe this whole Martian business. And I can't say that I do either. Problem is, it's the only story that fits the facts right now. From what you told me, that kid might represent the key to your life's work. You can help him by helping me. What? No, I'm not going to come see. I'm on the phone. Just tell me. Who? I'll be right there. 
I apologize if this is a stupid question, but has anyone bothered to call the Russians? I'm not there yet. Not there yet. They'll probably be able to tell us a lot of things we need to know. It's not that simple. As far as the United States government is concerned, we're holding a terrorist one step at a time. You want my help? This will help. Sharing information helps. That's how science works. Unfortunately, it's not how governments work. Show me. We've been getting a lot of questions from reporters for having a hard time confirming the satellite story, and this was just forwarded to me by one of the guys in the press gang. It's a segment their local news ran about an hour ago. Asteroid detection project. Turn it up. We happen to catch this, whatever it is, as we were going through our nightly backlog of images. And I can tell you for sure that it was not a satellite, and that it came from deep space. We run calculations. Find him. Get him off the TV and keep him away from the press. Wait. Find out who he is and get him here. You can't just do that. No, where were you yesterday? It's the secretary's office. The Russians are calling about their satellite. Should I tell them to call back? They say they know where all their satellites are and they didn't lose one. They want to know what we know. Luckily for me, I don't know much of anything and I wasn't about to tell them we have a cosmonaut from Mars. But this would be a good opportunity for you to explain to me exactly what in the hell you think you're doing up there. I thought by now you had the suspect on a plane. I was assured by his doctors that travel in his condition could be fatal. I'd like our people to be the judge of that. I have no reason to doubt them. Unfortunately for us, the Canadians are getting uppity about their sovereignty, especially since no one can seem to find any documentation about their request to your office for assistance. Things are moving very quickly, sir. Of course, but right now you're our only foothold there. We'll stick with the satellite story for now since it's already out there. But if the Russians think we have something that's theirs, they're going to want it back. There's no way in hell we're going to hand anything over to them until we know what it is we've got. If it turns out to be black market hardware that they let slip away, we're not about to turn over the evidence so they can cover it up. Yes, sir. You were never supposed to get anything this important, but it landed in your lap. The White House knows they can't afford to bungle this one or they won't make it to another term. That means everyone's expendable. No more surprises. I expect you to step up, and you are to maintain constant communication with my office. Get me? I do. Agent Larson, where's Director Taylor? What's this about? I'm acting as an official representative of the Canadian government. I need to speak to the person in charge of your operation. He's in there. Who are you? I'm Captain Binton. Where's the guy I was dealing with yesterday? I like that guy. Captain Adrian's been promoted. Since last night? He's on temporary duty here during an emergency. What's this about? You should know I've been ordered to place you under arrest. My government believes your operation is a violation of Canadian sovereignty. I spoke directly with the foreign minister and told him that based on Captain Adrian's support, I felt it was in Canada's interest not to rush to we have all the facts on the ground. He agreed. Thank you very much. Thank Captain Adrian. You believe you're doing the right thing, are you? I believe we are, yes. Good. Because my neck's in the line now, too. How much time do we have? Don't know, but I'd move quickly if I were you. My men and women are at your disposal. Thank you. Anything new from the crash site? Just more debris. Cleanup operations are almost complete. Keep me updated. You do the same. Oh. I've got it from here. Mr. Anderson. Anderson, with a T. Right. Do you have those images with you? Sure do. Anything I can do to help you guys out. Good. Between you and me, we can use it. Mr. Anderson, this Holy is Dr. Holy crap. You're the Mars guy, aren't you? Zachary Walzer, two planets, one future. That's right. Anderson, Clive Anderson, I am a big fan of yours. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's nice to be appreciated. What the hell have they got you up here for? Did they pick you up in a helicopter, too? Who are you exactly? Clive. Clive Anderton. Call me Clive. Yeah, I meant... I'm out of Goldstone in Arizona. We work with space guard tracking near-Earth objects. Asteroid hunters, you know. Ah. Seems we spotted you or whatever it is, and it caught up with us and came down. I guess they called me in so I could help you out. I, I don't suppose you guys have a phone around here I could use? I, I 
I think I'm out of my coverage area. Oh, it's, good. Mr. Anderson, call me Clive. Tom Taylor, how are you? First, let me just say, it is a privilege to be able to help you guys out. I really admire what you do, if I may say so. Oh, thank you very much. The pleasure's mine. Uh, so, Doctor, do you want to fill me in? Actually, before we get to that, we'll need you to sign a couple documents. Uh, you don't have to sign that. He really does. Of course, no problem. I understand. National security and all that. Uh, where do I sign? All right, I'll leave you to it. Agent Larson will get you everything you need. Zachary Walzer, how about that? What's this? Adelaide DeLeo, sir. I I'm with the Helena office. Why am I talking to you? Where's Taylor? He's indisposed at the moment, sir, but he's asked me to... How old are you? Are you really asking me? No, where's Taylor? Director Taylor is with the suspect, sir. Is he talking? I don't believe so, but he's doing better, as I understand. Better enough to be moved? I wouldn't know, sir. No, of course you wouldn't. Is there anything else that I can pass on to Director Taylor for you? Yes. Tell him the Canadians are threatening to close their borders. I'm dispatching a team to extract the suspect before that happens. They'll reach you there in six hours. Six hours? That's right. Remind me again who am I talking to? Agent DeLeo, sir. Fine. Next time I call, I want Taylor. Yes, sir. I shouldn't be here. I already have the password. I need the encryption key. The encryption key. I don't even know why we have to... Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hey, okay, hang on. Yeah, great, that worked. Now keep everything together for me while I'm gone. I told you I can't tell you where I am. Official business. Because I can't, that's why. Okay, yeah, bye. Here we go. That's what we got. That does look like a Russian Soyuz. That was my first thought, too. But it's coming from deep space. That doesn't make any sense. Pictures don't lie. The trajectory I calculated had it miss us by a notable margin. Then your calculations are wrong. They weren't. I checked it three times, and so did my staff. It's our job to look for stuff like this. These pictures are from Wednesday night. At the time when I made the calculations, they were correct. So something must have changed between then and when it came down here on Friday. For the trajectory to have shallowed that much, it would have had to have slowed down, like it was trying to catch us. My god. I know. This is it. What? Proof. What's this? A rock. I can see that. Why is it on my desk? This isn't just any rock. That's a rock from Mars. It's pretty much like any rock I've ever seen. Turn it over. That's fossilized evidence of life on Mars. The best evidence I've ever seen. That's better than the ALH-84 double one right Here. Back in 1996, NASA announced that they had found microscopic evidence in meteorites from Mars. You carry this around in your wallet? It's big news, but this, this is better. This is definitive. You said these came from inside the capsule? Yeah. It's a message. They're sending us a message. This is exactly what we'd hope to find if we ever went there. I'm sorry, Doctor. You're gonna have to do better than that. Better than what? Listen to what I'm telling you. I can't go to my superiors with a bunch of rocks. I need something definitive, like why that thing came down and spread radiation everywhere. Obviously, more than just the re-entry capsule came down. The nuclear battery was probably inside the service module, which is supposed to be ejected and left in space, but it wasn't. The whole thing re-entered. Could that have been intentional? What? Could that have been done intentionally? I don't follow. Why would somebody do that? To use as a weapon. That's insane. These are the questions I'm going to be asked. It's not wholly inconceivable, but it's a hell of a stretch. Yeah, you're right. A man from Mars is much less of a stretch. Well, I guess we'll find out when he starts talking. I don't think we can count on that. Why? Apparently, his immune system has been compromised. He's having a reaction to something. They can't figure out what. 
they can't figure out in time, well... Well, that would make sense. Why would that make sense? Think about it, living in one of the most closed off antiseptic environments imaginable. No acquired immunity to any of the germs that you and I are exposed to every day. Never had a vaccination. Never rolled around in the mud. He never scraped his knee on the playground. And so what should we do? I'm saying they have to stop treating him like he's a normal human being. He's not. It's not a reaction to something. It's a reaction to everything. Great. You know, pretty soon, I think you're going to have to decide what you believe. And what do you believe, doctor? What I can see. We have a kid with no acquired immunity who has cancer all throughout his body as if he's been exposed to intense amounts of cosmic radiation. We have pictures of a space capsule coming toward the Earth from deep space. We have rocks whose composition matches meteorites known to be from Mars. What else do you need? Time. An ageless design. Crafted by some of the most modern technology in the field. And for the first time, available to you. The Pioneer One T-shirt. Support the show by getting it and other fine merchandise at pioneerone.tv. Made possible by Hacker Threads. And that's what you're going to run. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, listen, I, I got to run. Thanks. Well, I've got good news or bad news, depending on how you look at it. What? I just got off the phone with the science editor from the Times. Is in the New York Times? It was in South Podunk. Yeah, sorry, the New York Times. They've got the Mars story. Where'd they get it? Wouldn't reveal their source. And? They're not running it. Why not? They don't believe it. So the bad news is that we have a leak, and the good news is that nobody believes the real story is real. Correct. This is a strange day. I'll tell them. South Podunk. It was funny in my head. Listen, we're going to get some food in here at some point, yeah? Yeah, I would hope so. Well, that doesn't sound promising. Somebody leaked the story. What story? The one we're holding a cosmonaut from Mars. And? Brennan's guy says they're not running it. Why not? They don't believe it's real. Okay, well, good. Yeah, good, but we can't have someone going to the press behind our backs. Who do you think it was? By the same person you think. Yeah. He hasn't exactly been quiet about his displeasure with you. Neither of you. No, but that's my job, at least partially. That's fair. You want to talk to him? No, I'll do it. I thought you'd be a little more upset. They're not running the story. Not yet. So what do you want me to do? I want you sooner rather than later to tell me what's going on inside your head. I don't think we have that kind of time. I'm serious. Right now everyone's going along with this because they trust you. But there's only so much you can ask of them before they're going to start questioning. If you recall yesterday, you were the one trying to convince me there I'm might be something simply pointing wrong. out that the story we had was consistent with the facts. I didn't say anything about ignoring orders or lying okay, to the press. Well, for now, so for now I'm holding down the fort. Thank you. Everyone's starving, by the way. Hello? Yeah, he's here. It's for you. Hello? Did you like the story? What? Newspaper got hold of the Mars story. Did you tell them? I don't know what you're talking about. It doesn't matter. They're not running it. Why? They don't believe it's real. Really? Yeah. Is that good or bad? A leak is definitely bad, and any violation of the confidentiality agreement would have serious consequences. I would think so. Anyway, we're out of time. The Apollo 11 astronauts returned from the moon. Congress passed something called the Extraterrestrial Exposure Act. It was to prevent any contamination by foreign microbes they might have picked up by placing them in a quarantine for two weeks. And, well, if you're willing to accept that we're dealing with something from Mars, there might be a legal requirement to place this entire area, everything, and everyone that's come into contact with the capsule or its occupant under quarantine. If not of that law specifically, then there's still a case to be made. It's a good
Good try, Doctor, but I think we're out of time here. I see. You've made up your mind then. What? Are you still? I'm gonna have to call you back. We've initiated a containment protocol, but he's going to need a lot more care than I can deliver. Oh, my God. Not for nothing, but if you'd been straight with me from the beginning, we could have avoided a lot of this. I wasn't sure I believed it. Belief has nothing to do with it. I can't effectively treat a patient if I don't know everything there is to know about their history. Don't keep anything from me again. Again, 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 I'll refer you, I'll refer you to our earlier statement. Ladies and gentlemen, Deputy Secretary Eric McClellan. Good evening. As you already know, a satellite crashed two nights ago near Edmonton in Canada. It spread some of the nuclear material it used as a power source over parts of Montana State before crossing the U.S.-Canadian border. It was for that reason that DHS agents from our Montana field office were dispatched to assist local Canadian authorities. This was at the request of officials in the Canadian government. Despite initial fears, all the information we have suggests that this was an accident, that there was no hostile intention on the part of any nation or terrorist organization, and that this is exactly what it appears to be. It has been suggested that the satellite may have been of Soviet origin, a relic from a bygone era. While we have not confirmed that, we have been in communication with the Russian government through their embassy, and I understand the president spoke with the Russian president by phone earlier this afternoon. We are expecting their full cooperation in determining the origin of the satellite if it is needed. For now, the base in Calgary, where the satellite debris has been collected, is being placed under strict quarantine. Since the uh, first affected areas were in the United States, the Canadian government has agreed to let the American Task Force, headed by Director Thomas Taylor, remain in Calgary to continue the investigation for the duration of the quarantine. I understand they will be issuing their own official statement shortly. I wish to express my hope that the uh, media refrain from sensationalizing this too much. Not that that's ever happened before. <laughs> Seriously, folks, I know it's a juicy story, but there is really very little cause for alarm. The situation is well in hand. Good night. The secretary. Well, we're in it now. I know none of you are expecting an extended stay up here, but I think you'll all agree that these unique circumstances deserve a thorough and thoughtful investigation. I also know that some of you may disagree with how I've handled this matter thus far. It's fair. Feel free to file a report when we get back. But for now, I expect you to continue doing your jobs until we get to the bottom of this. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm expecting a phone call. I'm to be your liaison with the Canadian government. Everything you do goes through me. Fine. Have those call reports you asked about? the Russians aren't hiding something. What? I don't know, but at least I bought us some time to find out. <laughs> oh, by the way, 
Your extraterrestrial exposure law was repealed 20 years ago. The only reason the Canadians are going along with all of this is because it seems you have an advocate in their government. If you have any idea who, let's send them a fruit basket. Yes, sir. One last thing. This now involves three countries, and you do not set policy for this government on your own. Are we clear? We are. Oh, good. I was just looking for you. There's something wrong with the toilet in the men's room. I, I think... Mr. Anderson, I'm going to have to ask you to come with us. What for? The waiver you signed prohibits making any unauthorized calls. The logs indicate you made several calls out of base. That's right. I needed information from my staff. I don't suppose you know anyone at the news desk at the Times. Um... Oh... Am I under arrest? No, but I'm going to have you escorted off base, and if any more news leaks out that we didn't leak ourselves, I'll know whose door to knock on. Humanity's future lies in space. We have the means to go there. What we seem to lack is the will. We could have been on Mars 20 years ago. Why aren't we? We could be pushing the boundaries of a whole new frontier world. Why aren't we? We could be sparking innovation and raising a whole new generation of dreamers who would push us even further than the generations that came before them thought possible. Honorable men and women of the committee, I come to you as an advocate for the very future of the human race. Because that is what we are talking about here. Not simply the future of our manned space program, but the future of man himself in the most real and profound way possible. And I, for one, will not sit idly by and watch us condemn that future to stagnation because we lack the will or the imagination. That future lies on Mars. And if it's not us, it'll be somebody else that gets there first. Thank you. Food if you want. I don't think I like that Clive guy very much. Yeah, well, he'll be pleased to know he won't be working with us any longer. Turns out he was our leak. I apologize for accusing you. What's the boy's name? I realize I never bothered to ask. Note didn't say. One of the many salient details it conveniently left out. For now, we're calling him Yuri. Why well, Yuri? I don't know. Seemed as good a name as any. I, uh... wanted to thank you. Saved the kid, not to mention my ass. Not bad for government work. You're welcome. You know, it's funny. Before all this started, I was this close to turning in my letter of resignation. Why? A lot of this job is about playing politics, turns out. I don't really have the patience for playing politics. Well, I can understand that. I need you to level with me, Doctor. What are we dealing with here? The evidence supports the boy's story. I can't fathom why somebody would make something like that up. As much as I want it to be true, I can't quite accept it. The odds of surviving something like that, even under ideal circumstances, there's a missing element. But 
seen that kid's face, I don't know what to believe. Yeah. Hey, if we're gonna be here for a while, I'm going to need someone to feed my dog. I'll get right on that. Next time on Pioneer One. Are you sure it's a good idea to keep bringing in new people? You're the nurse? That's me. So what's our cosmonaut friend hiding? I don't have time to argue. That's a change. What is going on up here? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. The parents. I'm so sorry. We can go back and find them. We hope you enjoyed the show. I'm Josh Bernhard. And I'm Bracey Smith. We're thrilled to share with you the continuing story of Pioneer One. We finished three new episodes, including the one you just saw, and they were all funded by your generous viewer donations. We'd like to finish this season with two final episodes, and we need to raise the money to make that a reality. If you've watched the show, please consider going to Voto.net or Pioneer1.tv and making a donation. If everyone who watched donated at least one dollar, not only would that ensure that we'd be able to finish the season that we've started, but it would also go a long way toward proving this as a viable alternative to traditional media, which I think is pretty exciting. You can also help by spreading the word on Facebook, Twitter, your blog, telling your friends, really whatever means you have open to you. The success of this show depends on your support. Help us reach that goal. Thanks for watching. Be seeing you.